okay students so uh, in this uh, video uh, we will show you how to fix the given workpiece in the check okay and also we will show you how to do a facing operation uh, i feel probably you would be knowing what is a facing okay facing is a process uh, that is used to reduce the length if the face of the given workpiece is not proper you can see it's not having a flat surface okay in order to make the surface flat the operations what we do is called as facing okay so to do this facing operations you have to use uh, uh, the check so this is the check you have to fix the uh, workpiece inside the check okay so normally uh, you have to fix like a 3 by 4 uh, portion of the workpiece should go inside the check okay Uh, if you fix like in the other way like uh, 3 by 4 should go inside the check and 1 by 4 portion should be outside the check if you, if you fix in the other way what happens is that there will be a wobbling and a proper uh, facing is not possible to do okay so in order to avoid the wobbling of a workpiece you have to fix in that way uh, you uh, like a 3 by 4 inside and 1 by 4 of the workpiece outside okay and we will be doing that uh, facing operation by using Uh, this uh, v point uh, single uh, single uh, cutting edge cutting tool okay yeah so uh, now uh, the tool has been fixed in the check so you can see by using a carry edge uh, we are bringing the cutting tool near the workpiece okay so the tool post has to be uh, fixed properly so there is no angle like uh, at what angle the tool has to be fixed okay so in order to avoid or in order to reduce the area of contact between the tool and the workpiece so for that reason the tool uh, will be rotated to some angle so switch on the machine so you can see the tool uh, is uh, bringing near the workpiece the workpiece is rotating probably i feel you, you should know the relative motion between the tool and the workpiece in the case of a lathe right so in the lathe workpiece will be rotating and the tool will be having a sliding motion okay you can see the same uh, relative motion uh, workpiece is rotating the tool is having a sliding motion uh, because of uh, shearing action the material removal takes place in case of all conventional machines you can see the chip that is coming out from the workpiece so that uh, completes facing operation so this is the first exercise uh, which you all do uh, when you come to the lab and when you get uh, these uh, lathe operations okay uh, so uh, that completes a facing operation right so you can see uh, the side of the workpiece is proper now it is completely uh, flat okay so after doing this facing operation the next uh, operation which we'll do is called as drilling okay you know what is a drilling is is a process of uh, making a hole of some diameter to certain depth okay so the reason why Uh, we do a drilling is that since the length of a workpiece is like 200 mm uh, you have to support the other end of the workpiece so right now to do a facing operation uh, we have fixed 3/4 of the workpiece inside the chuck okay but when you are doing a operations like a knurling or a thread cutting operations that uh, that the workpiece the portion of the workpiece which is inside the chuck has to be brought out okay so if it is brought out there will be a wobbling okay so in order to avoid that wobbling we will do a hole here okay so in this portion a central drilling will be done 
the only reason is to support the work piece support the work piece by using a tail strap okay it's a very simple operations by using a attachment you can see this is a drilling attachment okay various attachments are available in the lathe okay one such attachment is uh, this one uh, drilling okay so to do this uh, drilling what you have to do is that you have to uh, remove this uh, lock okay in the tail stock and you have to bring the tail stock near the end of the workpiece you can see we easily we can move so once uh, you you should not touch the uh, workpiece actually so you just bring need to bring quite close to the workpiece then you have to give a feed by using this handle you can see that's a feed okay so when you started when you start giving a feed you can see the cutting tool will try to go inside the workpiece and a drilling will be made or a drill will be made on the side of the workpiece you can see it now you can see the chip that is coming out uh, from the workpiece or you can say from the tool Uh, this is just uh, this is done just to uh, support the workpiece okay so that completes the drilling operation uh, so now uh, uh, drilling is done you can see here so drilling was done by using uh, this attachment okay so now uh, we have to remove this uh, drilling attachment okay so you can see now so uh, drilling attachment is removed now a revolving center will be uh, fixed here in the tail stock okay so the reason why uh, this is placed here is that this is just to uh, this is placed to hold the workpiece you can see the way how the revolving center is okay you, it will rotate the reason why it is called as revolving center means uh, that will rotate when you bring Uh, or when the tool is in contact with that revolving center okay so you can see now so once you fix uh, this revolving center the next step is to uh, loosen this uh, chuck okay and you have to bring out uh, the th 3 by 4th portion of the workpiece that is actually inside the chuck okay so to remove that chuck key will be used you can see okay so li little loose you have to make and bring out the workpiece which was inside the chuck okay you can see now revolving center has gone little inside the workpiece okay since the length of a workpiece is like as i said it is around 200 mm if you do not use this revolving center the tool may wobble or the tool may vibrate okay in order to avoid the vibration and in order to have like a rigidity while rotating uh, this uh, this kind of attachment will be used now you can see one end of the workpiece is fixed in the chuck other end is supported by the revolving center okay the rotary motion will be given by using a motor now uh, so after uh, doing this uh, the next operation which will be doing is turning Uh, probably i know what is a turning is it? it's a process uh, which is used to reduce the diameter okay if you reduce the length it is called as a phasing if you reduce the diameter it is called as a turning okay since you can see the surface of uh, the given workpiece is not proper okay it's not having a uniform diameter throughout the length okay in order to make uh, the surface of the workpiece uniform okay right now it is uh, 32 mm diameter i feel it should be reduced to 30 mm okay so in order to reduce that the operation which we do is called as turn okay so to do a turning you have to rotate the tool post earlier uh, I, i hope you know uh, while doing a facing operation the tool was fixed at certain angle okay so to do a, a turning operation uh, the cutting tool should be placed properly like how it is fixed now okay to do a turning operation the tool will move perpendicular to the surface of workpiece
So uh, to check uh, what's the diameter right now, uh, you can see this is outside caliper. Okay, it's a measuring instrument. Outside caliper will be used. Okay, that will be fixed at uh, the uh, outer diameter of a workpiece, and you can see what's a diameter at present. Okay, so other the measuring tool which we use is a, a scale. Okay, so once you set that, you can see the present uh, diameter of a workpiece that is around uh, 32 mm approximately. We have to reduce to 30 mm. Okay, so how to do a turning operations? You can see now. If it is not supported in the other end, uh, that's a that's a common sense. It will it will vibrate or it will wobble. Okay, so to avoid that wobbling, we have done a drilling, and that drilled hole will be used as a supporting uh, place to fix this revolving center. Okay, so to reduce that uh, uh, two mm diameter from the workpiece initially uh, you have to bring the cutting tool slightly near the workpiece that means it should slightly touch the workpiece you can see that uh, white portion what you are seeing in the workpiece that actually remote portion okay so in order to set the dimensions like exact 2 mm uh, because uh, tolerance and accuracy plays a very important role right so in order to uh, have the exact uh, material removal from the workpiece that as I said it is 32 mm that has to be reduced to 30 in order to do that uh, you just bring the cutting tool near the surface of a workpiece it should have a slight contact okay then you have to make a slight adjustment here in the cross slide okay you can see right now once once it is once the tool touches the workpiece you have to set this cross slide to zero. You can see here, right now it is zero. Okay. When you rotate 10 mm, you can see a 10 here. When you rotate that 10 mm, that means 1 mm uh, will be removed in the workpiece. Okay. So that means we have to, right now it is 32 mm. We have to remove 2 mm from the workpiece. That means you have to rotate to 20 mm in order to remove the required material from the surface of the workpiece okay so in order to have that uh, accuracy and dimensional uh, stability okay so these initial adjustment you have to make uh, before actually going for doing a turning operations okay now it is set once it is set you can remove the material so to remove the material uh, you have to use the two cross slide one is compound cross slide you can see that will be rotated with quite low speed okay so when you rotate that tool will move along x axis that is perpendicular to the surface of a workpiece and the material will be removed okay so now you can see the entire length of a workpiece is actually uh, turned and uh, right now uh, the diameter is 30 mm Okay, so the left portion of the workpiece, you can see uh, there is a step, okay, so the extreme left is actually at 30 mm, okay, so we, ha we just measured by using outside caliper, so once it is measured, uh, once you make sure that uh, the required diameter is 30 and right now the measured diameter is 30, so the same uh, has to be turned on the entire length of a workpiece. Uh, see students, now uh, plane turning is done uh, to a diameter of uh, 30 mm. Then after plane turning, you have to do a marking. If you see a manual, the given workpiece is divided and various operations are being done on the same workpiece. Operations such as taper turning, knurling, left hand v-thread, right hand v-thread, square thread, eccentric operations, all these operations has to be done in the same workpiece. Okay, so there is a required amount of length that is required for each of these operations.
okay so each the entire length of a workpiece has to be divided according to the length that is required for the specific operations okay so to mark that this procedure will be done uh, i mean uh, you have to just put a chalk piece on the surface of a workpiece okay like how it is now so once you uh, apply the chalk next step is you have to change the workpiece okay so you can see here this is actually uh, the diagram uh, showing the various operations that has to be performed on the given workpiece okay so that is this is available in page number 39 in your manual okay we have done a plain uh, turning operations then for the respective operations say for example for taper turning it is 30 mm for knurling it is 10 okay for thread cutting operation 8 tpi operation it should be 30 core diameter the space is required for 10 okay then 3 mm v thread it is 25 like that so you just see these dimensions and the same has to be marked on the workers okay so now marking will be done so to do that uh, marking you have to use this outside caliper and you have to set the length required length like a 10 mm or 20 or 30 mm so once it is set you have to mark it on the workpiece like this yes so once that that is done you have to indent that i mean that uh, marking should be there uh, so to to keep that marking for a longer duration you have to make slight indent on that uh, at that place that is done by using this v tool you, you just see a slight indentation will be done like that okay so similarly the various length that is required will be measured by using outside caliper and the marking will be done on the workpiece so now uh, marking is done you can see the marking is done right now for core diameter taper turning so second one is for taper turning this is for knurling and again for core diameter okay so now uh, after this marking actually you have to do a marking for all these operations okay so we are not done for all the operations uh, we eventually we will be doing and we will be showing that so now uh, i will be doing step turning operation after marking the next step is doing step turning same procedure bring the cutting tool it, it should just slightly it should touch the workpiece then set the dimensions there and continue the same process or same procedure how you did for plane turning operation so uh, now core diameter that is required here it, it is 26 mm okay to a depth of 26 mm or oh, sorry to a diameter of 26 mm the work will be reduced so it is not possible to do in a one go okay minimum 1 mm can be removed of course you can remove the 2 to 3 mm but it will damage the cutting edge okay so normally what we would uh, do is we will do it multiple times that is since uh, right now the diameter is 30 and the required diameter is 26 minimum 4 run has to be done to reduce 4 mm okay you can you can try to remove that 4 mm in one go but it will damage the workpiece as well as cutting tool there will be lots of vibration yeah uh, students now uh, diameter is reduced to 26 mm so once it is reduced there is a chamfering at the end of the workpiece so you can see here okay so 3 into 45 degree that chamfering is done just to avoid the damage if it is having a very sharp edge 
okay when you touch it it may damage your finger okay so to avoid that uh, uh, injuries this tampering will be done it is like the other end of so the tool will be used and the cutting will be done at using a side face of a tool okay you can see now tam chamfering is done